This is Chris from BattleRap.com. I am here with Mr. Chilla Jones. Uh, where are you right now, Chilla? Uh, just touched back down in the city, man. Just got back to Boston literally less than an hour ago, man. What's going on? Well, I'm, uh, I'm ready to hear about the excitement in Dallas last night. It was the Doomsday card. Um, what can you tell me about this, this league, this event uh, to start off? Right. Um, so this event... You know, it's called Doomsday. It was run by, you know, um, the, you know, mo- most of my dealings were with, you know, this dude, True, who, you know, as far as hospitality, as far as business, um, absolutely A1. You know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of leagues. I've dealt with a lot of, you know, different battles in a lot of different cities. And I can say that, that by far, you know, as far as everything combined, this was the best out-of-town experience I've ever dealt with. Wow. Like, everything was so on point as as should be, as you would expect from bigger leagues and, you know, more experienced leagues. It was, you know, it was amazing to see and amazing to deal with. You know, I think me and a lot of the other battlers were very surprised at just how professional and upfront and courteous they were. So, you know, shout out to them, shout out to True, shout out to, you know, everybody that was you know, looking after us, taking care of us this weekend. Cause we had a blast. We, we did a lot of things. We went out to the mall. We went to the club. You know, we did a lot of things together. Kicked it. You know, all the battlers, all you know, all his company. And it was it was dope, man. I, I had a great, great time in Dallas. A great time. Cool. So I, I met True in New York uh, over summer band this weekend. He was out there, kind of handing out flyers and, and shaking hands. Um, and yeah, I had a good talk with him. Good dude. Is he new to the scene, or is he just not very well known in the scene? Um, to my knowledge, he's new to the scene. Um, I, I think he's affiliated with, you know, some, or has been affiliated with some smaller leagues out in Texas. Um, I'm not sure for how long, but the, you know, the, the way he carried himself, it would it would lead me to believe that he has been around because right. he seems to know. You know how things should work behind the scenes, business-wise. So um, I'm not actually sure, to be honest with you. You know what his experience level is like, and how long he's been doing it. And you know, to my knowledge, this is his first big event that he's thrown anywhere. You know, and I would say it was a uh, success. Cool. So, uh, how big was it? Yeah, so it was, uh, 250 people in the crowd. Uh, which I think is good for footage. Um, you know, the venue definitely could have supported a lot more people. Um, a lot more people. You know, it's a huge venue. The venue itself was very, very dope. You know, we, we had our own kind of a couple couple of backstage dressing room areas. You know, there was food. There was, you know, drinks. There was, you know, everything battlers could, could ask for as far as accommodations. Uh, you know, the, the fans were very, very happy. Uh, stage was a good size at three large um, screens, you know, one on the stage and then one to the left or the right of the stage, you know, with different camera angles. So you can kind of, it kind of will give you an idea of how the footage should look. Cool. And it, it was really impressive. Um, you know, so I think the footage would come out really well. Uh, but yeah, it was about two, 250 people, you know, but I think that was the perfect size to make for some good battles. Yeah. Footage wise. Uh, I looked into that venue. It just opened, like, I think this month. Um, you know, we're, you're one of the first actual shows to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the screen looked crazy. And, it, I mean, it looks like a huge kind of entertainment complex almost. Yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of that's kind of what it was. I, I feel like, you know, I, I don't know what other event they would they would plan to have there, man. But that that's definitely a venue that could support some pretty decent... Um, names, you know, some some pretty some pretty big names. So yeah, um, you know, I, I hope for future events. I hope they, you know, they continue to do it there because I feel like as battle rap grows, I feel like as the culture grows in Dallas, I feel like as they, you know, put together bigger and better cars, that venue is going to be perfect for you know the, the battle rap. Like that. That's. I feel like if if Smack or anybody were were interested in throwing a huge event, that venue would be perfect. Like if they were interested in throwing an event out west, 
that that venue is like the one to do it. You know mm. what I mean? So cool. Um, so you know, I guess we'll see. Let's talk about the battles, uh, starting with your own with Young Ill. Uh, first of all, tell me your thoughts going into this battle uh, against him. Sure. Um, so going into the battle, um, it's always tough for Young Ill because it, it's similar to my daylight battle in that you don't really know what you're going to get. When I battled daylight, it was like, all right. He, he can he can write three crazy insane rounds, or he can come <laughs> dressed up as a woman, <laughs> and you just don't know what's gonna happen. Like you don't know what to prepare for. You know, luckily I prepared for the crazy insane pen of daylight, uh, and that's what he brought, and it made for a really good battle. Right. With young ill, it's not it's not so extreme, but it's like you don't know if he's gonna come and have one round written and freestyle the other two. You don't know if he's going to be, you know, as we call it, ice pack ill, which is ill in his, you know, prime form, who I feel like can beat anybody on the planet when he's, when he's really on it. Um, yeah, just you, for, for, you, for, for, sorry, there's, for, there's no call on it. for, right. Um, for anyone, you know, who doesn't necessarily know, uh, young ill's reputation in the last year or two i guess he had some issues uh with drugs apparently um or allegedly i guess and um he had a bit of a breakdown against o-red on stage and has kind of been trying to to find his footing again uh since that then right right so you know i don't i don't know for myself you know what what his issues were you know but needless to say you know since his battle with t-rex which i feel like was maybe Halloween of 2011? Yeah, that's a, I forget, I a while ago, many years um, ago. He, he hasn't really been the same battle. He hasn't really been at that same form. So, you know, since then, he's had, he's had battles with Charlie Clips, he's had battles with K-Shine, O-Red, Fresco, and King of the Dot most recently. And, you know, he, he had a lot of people's eyes wasn't that same guy that we've come to know and love. So, um, you know, I had high hopes going into the battle that he would return to prime form or at least show flashes of, you know, that battle that, you know, most of us love and appreciate. And did he? Uh, in, in my opinion, there were flashes. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think he was all the way there. Um, but he showed me enough to make me think that if he takes more battles consistently to get the rust off, I believe he can get back there. You know what I mean? But I did see flashes. That there were moments standing in front of him where I felt like, man, this this is the one. You know, this this is the young the you know the young ill I wanted to see. And then there were times where I was like, uh, okay, you know that line was cool. You know, it was whatever. Um, but overall, you know, especially for what I feel like people had predicted him to do, you know, I, I don't feel like people gave him a lot of, you know, a chance to really even show flashes. I felt like people felt like he was going to show up and just be terrible. And he wasn't. He wasn't terrible at all. You know what I mean? He showed up. He had three rounds. All in. Um, you know, his first round I thought was good. Um, I'm not going to spoil his approach, but he had a nice angle against me. Uh, his second round, I feel like, was his best round, um, bar for bar. Uh, he had his, you know, his, kind of his best, biggest lines in that round. Um, his third round was a little bit short to me. So I went a little bit over time in each round. You know, it wasn't nothing crazy like my DNA battles, you know, but we were pegged for 230. I might have went like 245. I might have like an extra four, eight bars. You know, mm -hmm. nothing crazy. But uh, I don't know if, it, if my rounds were just long or if his rounds were really as short as they felt. But they felt short as a building to most of us. This his first and his third. So, uh, you know, as far as the battle, I felt like I won uh, clearly two to one. I thought I took the first and the third. I 
I feel like the second round is debatable, but I feel like even the second round on camera may swing in my favor because I feel like the second was my best round as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, that's not to say that he didn't show up or didn't show out, you know. Like I said, I think he did a lot better than people want to give him credit for. Um, but I still believe that I clearly took that battle. I think on camera it'll be clearer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Where would you rank that performance uh, amongst your battles in the last year? Ooh, good question. Um, where would I rank it? So if we're talking the past year, this is October. Last October I battled Dead Man, Young Cannon. Then after that was Black Heart Adonis, Daylight, Real Deal. Where would I rank Young Ill? If we're talking my personal performance, I would say Daylight, Dead Man, Young Ill. Right there, I would say. Cool. So right I... after Daylight and Dead Man, right after those two King of the God performances, and then I would say Real Deal right after that. Right. Hey, I meant to ask you this before. Um, while we're talking about Real Deal... What would you have said if he had given you five? <laughs> That's one of those questions people <laughs> always ask. So I, I had another flip. Um, it was it was gonna pretty much end the same way, except had he given me the five, it, you know, that would it would have been a, a a twist on the punchline. It, it would have been, you know. I know you're used to, you know, I didn't expect that because I know you're used to leaving people hanging. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? Like, it, it would have been a, it would have been a different twist on how I delivered it. Gotcha. But it, it, it would have had, you know, I believe it would have had the same impact. Right. I, w- I was actually low-key expecting, because I, I appreciate Real Deal's intelligence and craftiness as a veteran. I, I low-key thought he may actually give me five. That's <laughs> why I even had something prepared, because... I, you know, he's smart enough to say, either way, I'm fucked. Right. Let me shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well do this and throw you off. You know what I mean? So. Right. Okay, good. Well, you heard it here first. Yeah. 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 Uh, so let's get on t- to the uh, rest of the battles on the card. Um, C3 versus Adi Boom. Just break that down quickly for me. Sure. Uh, C3 versus Adi Boom. Uh to me, uh, round one, I gave to Adi Boom. Round two, to me, is the swing round. It can go either way. Uh, C3 has a crazy, crazy rebuttal in round two. Um, that may have won her the round just off of those, hmm. just off just off that alone. Um, but I also thought Adi's round two was really dope. I actually leaned toward Adi Boom in round two. Um, in round three, I get to C3. But like I said, I think round two is the swing round. Uh, I know JC and other people gave that round to C3. Um, so I would say 2-1 either way. For me, I'm going 2-1 Adi Boom. Okay. Good battle, though? Very. Very good. Competitive battle. C3 once again showed that she can, you know, she can hang. With the guys, you know, she had a great battle with a lot of Zay. Yeah. Um, and once again, showed up in, in prime time, body boom, man. She, she she is really dope. She's one of my favorites of any gender. Um, she always shows up and shows out. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, great battle. Great battle. Uh, what about JC and Scripps? Another great battle. Uh, I gave JC round one. Um, Scripps. Came back in round two and had, might have been a round of the night. His round two against JC, man, he had some of the wildest punchlines strung together that I've heard in a very long time. Do you remember um, any? Very long time. But um, it was dope. I gave scripts round two. Round three, can, can I like they sorry, both kind of lost. Chilla, me. chilla. Can, can you uh, remember any of the lines that scripts had in that second round? Nothing comes to mind. 
Okay. Honestly. That's okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that a little bit in the meantime, but um, round three, I feel like they both lost a little bit of steam. Round three is going to be the swing round for this battle. Um, in the building, I edited to scripts 2-1. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not mad at you if you edit to JC. Like I said, round three is a swing. We go either way, so, uh, you know. But another another good back-and-forth dope battle with some history behind it. Cool. What's the history there? Uh, so one of the first people to ever speak out on JC's dance video <laughs> was Young Scripps. Um, gotcha. Young Scripps dot blog, basically dissing and discrediting JC. You know, basically saying you know you can't talk about guns, you can't talk about the stuff that you talk about in your in your in your battle rap because there's clearly a video of you dancing <laughs> for Chris Stokes. Who right. has the reputation of being uh, janky, pedophilish <laughs> manager, or you know, whatever you want to call it? Mm. Um, and so, young scripts, you know, really put that blog out discrediting JC. This and this was years ago. This might have been like 2011, 2012. You know, so so ever since then, there's there's been a slight grudge between them. You know what I mean? Where you know, I don't know if they were ever set up to battle before, but, you know, they've they kind of had to deflect for each other ever since. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think you can be a, a dancer and a gangster? Huh? Do you think you can be a dancer and a gangster? <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, why not? I, I know some, some pretty talented dancers who, you know, I would say are real in that regard uh i don't i don't think dancing takes away from anything else in your life you know any other characteristics you may have or courage or whatever you want to classify being gangster as but um you know we all look at things differently <laughs> I, I i guess i understand scripts in his i think his whole point this whole premise was you don't intimidate anybody because of this video mm. but you know at the end of the day you know we're, we're all men right i just so i'm it, you say, whether you're saying it doesn't really matter you know you do what you gotta do it brings to mind tupac as a, a backup dancer for digital underground right which a lot of people don't know mm. tupac took ballet as a kid right you know what i mean a lot of people don't know little things like that but you know to me you know it definitely doesn't dictate how real a gang you are at all right so uh let's move on to cortez versus danny myers <clears throat> i saw a few people saying uh this was battle of the night what did you think agreed clearly clearly battle of the night clearly um cortez may have had the performance of the night May have had the performance of the night, um, and that's not to take away from Danny at all. Danny was Danny. You know what that means? That means he was bar after bar after bar, haymaker, haymaker, relentless, consistent, nonstop. Danny does what Danny does, and if you're a fan of Danny, you'll have him win in this battle. Definitely. Um, Cortez, though. Really showed up, really showed up with three solid rounds. Bar heavier than usual, killer angles. Um, he really showed up. Like I, I was thoroughly impressed with Cortez. And in the past, I've been one of his biggest critics over the years. I was very impressed with Cortez and what he did last night. Um, if I had to call that battle um, in the building. I think the building definitely leaned toward Cortez. Um, there were some people, you know, I heard had Danny. I think I think a majority of people live had Cortez, but on camera is where Danny will get you if he's going to get you. Mm. Um, so on camera, I think it'll be a lot closer. 
But as far as live and how I felt about it live, I would add Cortez to one. Hmm. Yeah, I saw Cortez. Um, Cortez and Danny were both in Phoenix at Duel in the Desert a couple weeks ago, and and I think I saw either a tweet or a Facebook message, a uh, Facebook post from Cortez saying like after seeing how how well Danny did against Verb, it really inspired Cortez to write, um, you know, to, to try a lot harder against Danny. Right. Right. And that, you know, I, when I spoke to Cortez, you know, the day before the battle, that was the same exact thing he told me. That was the same exact thing he said. Man, he said, Danny stood in front of one of the best verbs I ever seen and kept up the whole way. Mm. Just keep up for a round and then fade off. He didn't keep up for two rounds, fade off the third. He said he, he, they fought. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I think that, especially because Cortez has battled Verb, and in a lot of people's eyes, didn't do so well. Um, I think that really kind of put Cortez in a position to understand that Danny is not He's not just a PG. He's not just a, you know what I mean? He's, he's been doing this for a long time. He's really dope at what he does. He might just have recently been getting his recognition, but Danny is, is very, very capable of being anybody on any given night. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then talking about Verb, uh, he battled Big K in what was the main event. Uh, tell me about that one. Uh... This was a weird <laughs> yeah. battle to me, um, and I and I shall explain. So round one, I missed the very very beginning of Big K's round one, like maybe the first four or six bars. Um, but when I got out there to the stage to to listen to whatever, um, Big K was going off. Um, for, for a good 45 seconds. I don't, something happened in the crowd to where Big K was distracted, stopped in the middle of his round to address somebody in the crowd. And to me, it kind of messed up his momentum that he had going. Um, he was able to jump right back into his round and pick the momentum back up very quickly. But I just feel like on camera it's not going to be as clean as it could have been. What was he saying to the guy in the crowd? Um, he was just basically like, you know, let me rap. You know what I mean? Because he was, you know, whoever was in the crowd was saying something like very loudly to the point where it, I feel like it literally may have thrown Big K off. Now, I don't know if it actually threw him off or if he just stopped to literally address the dude in the crowd because he felt like he shouldn't have been talking through his round. Um, but, you know, Big, you know, Big K was just like, you know, you paid to get in here, let me rap. You know, let, let me do what I'm here to do. Let me rap, like, cut the shit out. You know, so, I, I don't know if, I, you know, like I said, I don't know what the dude in the crowd actually said. I don't know if he was taken up for a verb. Maybe Big K something, he was, said something, he was taken up for a verb. Or, you know, maybe he was saying something to Big K in support of him and just, that this shit too loud. Like, I have no idea, but, you know, Big K wasn't happy about it. Okay. Uh, but he got through his first, he finished his first, and his first was crazy. Um, a verb goes, uh, his first round, he does a showtime. His round overall is good, and I don't, I don't know if it ends short. I don't know if his round was short. It felt short to me. First round, I gave it to Big K. Uh, second round, Big K was back. He was, man, Big K was so consistent in this battle. Outside of that first round, you know, addressing the heckler, mm -hmm. um, Big K to me was great this battle. He was aggressive. He rebuttaled the hell out of Averb every round. Um, just was doing what Big K does, man, like. He's so consistent. This was a, a um, bit of a. Dope. This was a bit yeah, of a. So, he does another showtime. Sorry, Chilla. Um, sorry. Uh, the, this was a bit of a grudge match too, because the two of them 
were kind of arguing online and then all of a sudden there was a conversation with the two of them on I think Angry Fans Radio um, where they were disagreeing about something as well. Right. So did did right. that translate? So, did yeah, that? Angry mm-hmm. fan, you know, they. I, I think it started in one of the groups. I think I think it was. I think it had to do with. So Big K, I think, said something after. It was either Verb and Ilmax, or Verb and Caustic. Mm. Something about you know Big K has this feeling where. Fans like top tier battlers and support top tier battlers even when they don't always show up and even when they don't always show up prepared. And, you know, I, I, I think it was after one of those two battles, one of those, either V2R or Bola 5, that, you know, Big K spoke out and used Averb as an example, I believe, and was like, you know, you guys support him and, and you know, whatever, whatever. You know, but he's choked in two straight battles. He's lost two straight battles, blah, blah, blah. Um, Averb said something on Facebook as a response, saying that Big K kind of only is a, is a fan favorite now because he's been in King of the Top. Right. And that he wouldn't have that same success in URL. So this kind of spawns like a back and forth type of, you know, dialogue between them on Twitter, which spills onto angry fan rating. They get into an argument. It even gets to a point where Big K says, you know, when I see you in person, I'm going to put hands on you type type of talk. You know, like I got pretty heated. Um, so, a little bit of a background story. I was supposed to battle Aver. That was my original matchup. It was me and Verb. And Big K and DNA, I believe. Huh. Um, I don't know what the terms behind it were getting switched. I think Averb opted to battle Big K instead of me because of that little history that they have. <clears throat> so I believe that's why the matchup changed, and I ended up, you know, battling Young Ill, which was fine by me. But yeah, so that, um, you know, just just as a as a little bit of a um, that a lot of people may not know. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, as far as back, you know, back to the battle. Um, round two, I edged Aver. Uh, um, his showtime in round two was a little bit better to me than his round one showtime. Um, better. Became best round probably, and Averb's worst. Averb stopped very short. About 40 seconds into his round, he even says, you know, I'm freestyling now. And his freestyle to me was terrible. Mm -hmm. Um, And closed out with a slogan, the battle was over. So the battle kind of had an awkward feel. I don't know how it's going to translate on camera, but in the building it had an awkward, like, (laughs) slightly uncomfortable feel for for some of the battle. Mm. Uh, But as far as my verdict, Live, I gave it to K21 clear. I don't think that's going to change on the footage. So, mm-hmm. um, that what I said was big K21. Any idea when the footage is coming out? I don't know when or on what platform the footage is coming out. You know, obviously, Rap Grid will have the pay per view ready probably by Monday or Tuesday. Um, as far as you know, I, I don't know if the footage is going to end up with another league or another platform, or I don't know if, you know, True has a has a YouTube, you know, I know he has a YouTube where the trailers and some of the interviews have dropped. I don't know if he's going to use that same YouTube to put out the battles, but, um, you know, we, we should know in the next three or four days, you know, for sure what the plan for the footage is, but um, I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, the pay-per-view is through Rap Grid, Rap Grid is through D-Rex, D-Rex is working with uh, Lush, I believe. I wouldn't be surprised to see the footage go to Lush or somebody over there. Right. Um, but honestly, I don't, I don't know what the plan is for the footage. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I guess um, catch that pay-per-view and, and stay tuned for uh, more updates. Yes, indeed. We'll be tuned in. We'll definitely be tuned in. I can't wait to see the footage myself. Cool, yeah, looking forward to it. All right, we'll end it there, uh, unless there's anything else to talk about. Um, were there any, like, you know, any craziness behind the scenes or anything that's going to be mentioned in, in upcoming battles, you think? Um, not much craziness behind the scenes, man, I... And I know Big K felt some type of way about, you know, Chris Roman by his review posting, you know, because they also have a slight grudge, you know, from from his group, which obviously, you know, is kind of the biggest battle rap Facebook group out there, most known, most popular. Um, you know, him and him and Big K have a history. If you look at Chris's recent blogs, like the seven unanswered questions right. blog. Take some shots at me, take some shots at Big K and some other people. Uh, and even prior blogs to that, you know, he he called Big K corny and, he, you know, kind of kind of take shots and discredit him for whatever reason, whatever grudge they have. So, you know, I know Big K wasn't happy about Chris even being in the building. You know what I mean? Like, hmm. you know, that that was kind of a, a, an issue, but. Um, otherwise, you know, it was, it was, it was dope, man. Like the, the fans showed a lot of love. The crowd was great. No bias, no, no, you know, no dry spots. Crowd had a lot of energy. Um, the atmosphere otherwise was dope, man. I, lo I loved it out there. Uh, Hurricane Chris was in the building. I know some other people in the building, but it was dope. It, it was dope, man. Battle rap in Texas definitely looks like it's going to continue to grow and, and get bigger. So. Uh, yeah, otherwise, man, the event went smoothly. No, no, no real, you know, big blowouts behind the scenes or anything really worth mentioning. It, it all went pretty smoothly. Well, good. That's the way it should be. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, let's leave it there. Chill Jones, thank you very much for your time. Uh, where can people find you uh, online? Of course, at Chilla Jones on Twitter, Chilla Jones on Instagram. Facebook.com slash Chilla Jones official. Come check me out, man. And www.chillajones.com. We'll get to welcome to the Boss Town mixtape. It's been out for a couple of months. We'll support that free download. Look out for my next battle. Don't flop. C Major in London, November 15, 16. We out there, man. Check out for that debut.